what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video first off hope everyone had a great weekend but we are back here with the new look revealed series once again as we have 10 teams left to do and today we're starting off with my favorite team personally the portland trailblazers so i've been trying to avoid teams that i feel like still could make moves but it's just been dragging on for too long now so let's just go ahead jump in and do this new look Portland Trailblazers rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We are currently on the road to 50,000 subs. So you want to go ahead, hit that subscribe button, help us reach that goal. That would be awesome. Other than that, yes, like I said, today we're talking about my Portland Trailblazers. So, of course, they have a very interesting team because there's a couple guys or a few guys that could still be traded, but up to this point, Nothing has happened, so I'm just sick of waiting around. So, of course, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, Robert Williams are like the three guys that I feel like could be potentially moved before the season starts. But, like I said, um, at this point, there's like no incentive for the Blazers to rush things. They could just go in with this roster and see what happens, and then eventually they make that move. I don't know. So, what we're going to do, based off what we know now, I think we're just going to jump into the season with the roster currently constructed, and then maybe we address things at the trade deadline. So... Let's go ahead and do that. Of course, the two new additions this offseason were Denny Avdia and Donovan Klingon. The same two moves happened on the same night on draft night. They haven't really done anything other than that. So that's kind of where they've been as a roster. So let's go ahead, which by the way, I love those two moves. It should help out the defense. Gives us a couple more talented players, guys that want to win, which is awesome. But like I said, I still wanted to move a couple veterans off the roster because we're still rebuilding team we're still not gonna make the playoffs next year there's no point of keeping the vets let's just trade them for picks but I get it Joe Cronin wants two first for Jeremy Grant I guess like set the bar high I don't know if we're ever gonna get that uh, but maybe a team becomes desperate who knows but let's go ahead and jump into the season we do have to cut one person so let's go ahead and see who that's going to end up being so uh I believe Ibu Baji of course is a two-way guy in real life so I guess we could just go ahead and cut him I don't even know if he's on the roster anymore as a two-way to be honest but let's go ahead and get into the rotation so this is definitely going to leave someone out of the rotation so let's see who that will be so 10 minute rotation under Chauncey Billis will be Scoot, Anthony Simons, uh Jeremy Grant, Jabari Walker so of course we're going to start Denny Avdia there's no point in not starting him so we can move Jeremy Grant to power four because I assume if Jeremy Grant's still on the roster it's going to be Denny Avdia and Grant starting it would be Scoot, Anthony Simons, Denny Avdia, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre, and then Shaden Sharp. Uh, with Robert Williams, Tamani Kamara, Jabari Walker, and Donovan Klingon, which leaves, uh, you know, I think that's kind of the rotation we could definitely end up seeing next year, potentially. Um, like I said, we're rebuilding. This team still should not be very good. So I think at the deadline, we should probably try to clear some minutes up, whether that's trading Anthony, trading Jeremy Grant. We're definitely trading Jeremy Grant, 100%. Maybe trading Robert Williams as well. So let's just go ahead. So my year number one with things the way they are currently and just let's just see how it goes i'm expecting to be bad of course and then we'll have another lottery pick in the offseason and hopefully we can land cooper flag or something today's video is brought to you by two softwares designed to help you beat the sports books and become a much profitable sports better we're starting off here on bgf daily grand fantasy's optimizer so if you're on price picks there's actually a lot of value on the board at the moment but i believe this is glitched because price picks has been down for like maintenance or something but as you can see the reason why we like some of these plays if they were there in theory which i don't think they are anymore but uh, Quito Marte under one and a half bases is heavily favored by every book. Look at that. An average of minus 158 odds. If you plug this in on price mix on a five flex, you're getting at minus 119, which is a clear, clear value play. Same thing with Andrew Abbott under five and a half strikeouts. And the beautiful thing about this, guys, is we found these plays within two seconds. I didn't have to go find the last five matchup. I didn't, I didn't have to go look at who's starting or whatever. You just trust the daddy. You trust the math because sports books know a lot more than we do. I promise you that. If you think you know more than sports, sports books, you are currently wrong. You need to change your uh, mindset. I used to think that I knew ball so I could just bet with my gut and my emotions and be like, yo, this guy is good at the game, so he's going to go out there and score 20 or whatever it may be, whatever sport is. It just doesn't work that way, I promise you. And we also love OzGM's positive EV, EV tool as well. So basically what this does, it does pretty much the same thing, but on traditional sports books such as like FanDuel, DraftKings, Fanatics. But currently under my filters, it doesn't look like there's anything available. So let's go ahead and clear the filters so we could at least see something so I can give you guys an example potentially. So if something is going to pop up, maybe we're not going to get anything. Wow. Okay. What is going on? All right, whatever. So basically, you guys know if I can get this to work, bro. Why can't we work? Can I get a 
for some reason the website's not loading so whatever but basically it does pretty much the same thing it has a fantasy optimizer and also focuses on traditional sports books that i've showed you guys in the past so if you want to check out either tool links are down in the description below use code crushables uh gives you 50 percent off your first month on odds gym and 25 percent off on dgf make sure to check them out both links in the description below on that let's get back to the rebuild so as promised we are at the trade deadline as we are currently a lot better than i want to be at 25 and 26 so if you take a look at the player stats you had 19 for man for new simon 69 from scoot 16 from aiden 16 from sharp 14 from grant and eight from denny obvia so grant's averaging 14 points per game on uh 38 percent shooting from three on four attempts so uh i know a lot of people like to point out grant's contract and how bad it is but you can't tell me that a team that has or wouldn't want a power forward that's shooting you know 40 percent from three almost 40 percent from three who can play a little bit a uh, little bit of defense and is very lengthy so let's go ahead and trade jeremy grant away and let's just start in the trade finder i doubt we'll find anything that i like but we'll just start there because i want to move him i want to get him out of here so let's see what pops up so i don't want james harden i don't want clay capella i you know josh green is fine and all but of course the obvious team to go try to make a trade with would be the los angeles lakers to see if we can make something happen because that has been the heavy rumor uh looking at this trade finder i don't really like anything too much but if i can find a different team other than the lakers then i'm totally down to do it so let's go ahead i mean i guess we can move jeremy grant to small forward made to boost up his trade value even more since we are trading him here and he goes up so we'll do that so let's move him to small forward and let's uh throw him in the trade finder again and see if anything different pops up with him being a small forward now if not we will build our own trade but i think at the deadline i might just focus on getting grant out of here so second round pick pops up from atlanta this time uh i would at least like one first at least one first from somebody uh so nothing so far but i can build my own trade i think with a team and get something so the hawks are interesting because of course they still have trey young so maybe they would want uh jeremy grant so click Pella is fine but let's see if we can do something different so um do you have like any expiring salary i mean they have larry nance's expiring contract uh but i doubt that gets us even so 15 million dollars still need in this trade maybe we send bodom and donovich to us i guess and we get a first round pick and maybe send bodon somewhere else and get a, like a protector first or a pick swap or something along the lines of that that'd be kind of cool uh so let's see if we could do something like that and then we'll give you uh let's say we give you duop wreath in return so larry nance so jeremy grant duop wreath for larry nance and bodon and then you give me um a let's say that ooh, the lakers pick would be phenomenal but that's just too good of a pick for them to trade away so let's say we get the 2027 pelicans pick and then maybe we could send bogdan to a third team i highly doubt it maybe we could just do it after we do the trade so let's tr let's try to make this a three-team trade but let's just do this first and see if they'll accept this they want ryan repair i hate to give up ryan repair to be honest with you um uh, but let's see if we can do it without ryan repair could i give you just like a second or two to do this so three seconds will give me a second whatever we'll do it we're getting a first round pick and i believe we could flip bogdan for a first as well so we're gonna go ahead and do that so bogdan if we can get a first round pick for him i would feel pretty successful about that trade but let's see if anybody's willing to throw me a first round pick for bogdan uh the nets uh the nuggets want him for okay i don't know why the nuggets even have enough salary to do this it's probably popping up in a, a trade exception but yeah i would have done that uh the rockets kind of interesting because of, the, of course they want to be competitive they're going to give me Steven Adams expiring contract to do so. If they want to make this a first, I'm so down to do it. So let's say it's a 2028 Rockets pick. I, I mean, I would prefer if it was protected, but since it's not, they want a 2028. We're not doing that. I'll throw you a couple seconds. We can walk away with two firsts for Grant. Four seconds. We turn it into two firsts. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Just like that. Bodon's going to uh, the Rockets. They're trying to be competitive, and we get two first round picks. We did trade a bunch of seconds to do so but whatever it's not that big of a deal seconds and 2k kind of don't really end up being anything for me usually so all good so we get rid of jeremy grant which is nice now we can move uh denny avdia actually what do we do if we play denny avdia at the small four still that puts jabari walker in the starting five i could trade anthony simons right now as well but maybe i'll just wait till the deadline to do that so i think we'll just keep things the way they are right now currently and we'll just simulate the rest of the season and we'll just see how it goes i'm kind of hoping we fall off a little bit but i'm assuming we're still going to be decent which kind of sucks because of course i want a high pick in this draft lottery and unfortunately it's not going to result in that way because this team is doing good for whatever reason so at the end of year one it was a very close western conference uh to be honest with you because we were like 39 wins towards the end of the season about to be under 500 and we were the fifth seed i'm like why are we the first seed right or the fifth seed right now i think it makes an all rookie second team which is nice but thankfully we kind of fell all the way to 10 
Uh, so we get the Pelicans around one. If we take a look at the player stats, yeah, 21 from Simon, 17 from Aiden, 17 from Sharp, 16 from Scoot, 9 from Denny Avdia, 7 from Klingon, and 7 from Jabari Walker. So let's see if we lose the Pelicans, and we do lose. So we are headed to the lottery, which is nice, because I want to be a lottery team. Of course, I would have rather have been a high lottery team, but what can you do? So you got the Mavericks and the Thunder, and you're going to have Dallas and Minnesota again. Dallas beats them again, and they got Brunson versus former squad, but Luka Doncic and the Mavericks go on to win it all so here's all your retirements a lot of important ones there but let's go ahead and get straight into the lottery because that's where it's all going to start for us so of course we are going to be projected pick number 11 we're probably not going to get lucky and jump up that would be cool it is protected so we get to keep this pick even though it says it's going to chicago and it is going to stay at 11 so that sucks would have loved to have gotten a miracle jump up but not going to happen uh and then you got nets via milwaukee thunder via clippers and then hornets at number two so we don't jump up of course we had to be good which is kind of annoying but uh we're gonna fire chauncey or not bring him back uh, we could fire pretty much everybody here we're not bringing anybody back from this squad so all these guys can go and we are chilling there so head coaching staff coach staff is completely blank and now we can fill this out i'm gonna fill out this coach staff i'll see you guys in draft night with what we do next i'm just gonna go grab like will hardy be the head coach and i'll fill out the rest of this so before we head into this draft, I want to see if I can send Anthony Simons to the Orlando Magic. I know everybody thinks this, at least everyone should, but Anthony Simons on Orlando is a perfect fit. We have Scoot and Sharp for the future. As much as I want to keep Simons, maybe the Blazers do end up keeping him, but I just think it's a much cleaner fit if we, of course, move Simons, give Sh uh, Scoot and Sharp the keys to the backcourt. So I'm trying to send him to Orlando. I want to see if I could walk away. Maybe we don't even have to do a uh, Mo, Mo Wagner, but I want to see if I could walk away with Simons for Anthony Black. And this is pick 21. You know, ideally, I would love to get another first, but I don't know. I We'll see if they'll accept it. So they want a 2025 pick, which is in this draft, which I'm not going to do, clearly. They did throw me Mo Wagner, but I don't want Mo Wagner. So what if it's just Anthony Black? Maybe not a pick in this draft, but it's 2027 and, you know, 2029 or something. Would you do something like that? What do you say? Or maybe we don't even do Anthony Black. Maybe you guys, maybe you could just take his salary in total. We get a two first round picks. They do have to include one player, it looks like. So let's say it's Gary Harris's contract. So two firsts for Anthony Simons. They want a couple seconds. We just They want to throw me another first, I guess. You know what? Sure, why not? I don't think the Blazers are getting three firsts for Anthony Simons, but the Orlando Magic wanted to counter with three firsts. Sure, I'll take it. So just like that, Simons goes to Orlando, which I think is the best fit for him anyway. And now we can go draft here at pick 11. But there is one guy I also want to keep in mind on draft night. And that is going to be Jabari Smith Jr. I want to see if I can maybe get Jabari Smith Jr. on draft night. Because there's always, there's just been, you know, there's kind of some rumors about Jabari Smith. And uh, maybe the Rockets not planning to pay him. And I think he obviously would be like the perfect power forward for us. There was some rumors about the potential being interested in Robert Williams. We're going to see what is available to us at 11. And then we're going to make our decisions. So Cooper Flag, Don't Harper go back to back with Trey Johnson. Uh, he'll go. Ace Bailey is not gone. But of course, he's going to go before he reaches us. Uh, Noah Traore, uh, VJ Edgecombe, Rocco, and then uh, Ding. So low-key, we do have Hugo still on the board. I, or did he go? Or am I stupid? He did go. I just didn't see him go for some reason. Never mind. Okay, so we have a center. We have Liam. We have Noah. But uh, I could draft Ian Jackson. I'm, I'm low-key. I low-key want to go for Jabari. I really do. I just think it would be a better thing to do. So that's what I'm going to try to do here on draft night. Maybe the Rockets never move them, but as a Blazers fan, this is just a dream for me. So we're going to see if we can throw them Robert Williams in pick 11 for Jabari. What do you say to that? They don't agree to it right away, which is fair. I will give you Gary Harris, who I just got, and they do agree. So just like that, the Rockets are picking 11, and they grab Damian Sarr. So they grab Damian Sarr. They get Robert Williams, who should be a great fit for them, and I'm feeling good. So we get um, another guy on draft night. The Blazers, of course, trade for Denny Abdi on draft night. And now we have Jabari Smith Jr., who I think is a fantastic fit in Portland if we're able to grab him, which, of course, is a dream scenario. But, hey, I got it done anyway. So, Scoo Henderson, Shannon Sharp, uh, Denny Avdia, Chris Murray, Bible, Tamani Kamara, Jabari Smith Jr., DeAndre, and Klingon. So, starting five is looking good. I actually kind of like where we're headed with that. So, Denny Avdia, Jabari, Aiton, and then uh, Scoot and Sharp in the back. Where it sounds great to me. Uh, Murray and Thibel could fight over the small four spot. It'll probably be Chris Murray. I assume he develops a little bit. We can maybe even move Kamara to back up small forward if we need to, if we could sign a power forward. But we just need to sign a couple guards and we should be fine, which is, you know, something the Blazers have usually been good in that department, but we need some guards. So, uh, Alvarado, Davion Mitchell, Monte Morris, Jordan Goodwin, 
Low key, I wouldn't mind signing Ben Simmons off the bench just because, you know, really big guard, but I'm not going to do that. So, uh, Quentin Grimes, what else we got? Uh, Nick Alexander Walker was here for a second in Portland. They didn't keep him very long, of course. Uh, Trey Mann, Giddy. Okay, so we have a lot of cast space, but I'm not trying to go for guys that are going to, like, take up too many shots. So, um, what do we want? I know Ben Simmons wouldn't take any. Jalen Noel, Cameron Payne, Alvarado. I mean, I feel like Alvarado would be pretty solid. So, I'm going to grab Alvarado to be off the bench for us. I'm going to give him a three-year deal to keep him around for a while. And then shooting guard, let's go D'Anthony Melton, I guess. Something along the lines of that. So, that gives us a couple really good backup guards. Is there any power forward we want to go for? Uh, we could re-sign Jabari Walker. So maybe we re-sign Jabari and just move. I don't know. Do we re-sign Jabari or do we go for somebody else? Let's see. Is there anybody else? Like Jalen Johnson, the Hawks are going to match that. Uh, maybe it's just as simple as re-signing Jabari Smith Jr. and sliding Kamara the small forward. So let's do that. So Alvarado, Melton, Jabari Walker all re signed which is great. We can renounce all of this because I'm not keeping any of these guys. So that's great. So we get that taken care of. All right. Well, we kind of have a full rotation now. So it's Scoot, Alvarado, D'Anthony Melton. Chris Murray, Thibel, uh, Tamari Kamara, and then Donovan Klingon. So we do need to sign a third string center. Let's go sign a very cheap one. So let's go down the you know, down the block a little bit. Let's say we get, I don't know, uh, maybe not Coloco, but like Pokoshevsky who just signed somewhere today, I saw. Maybe we bring back Duop Reith who we traded or Winnie and Gabriel was in Portland. So let's just bring back Duop Reith. He was a blazer anyway, so bring him back. So Reith comes back to Portland, which is fun. And boom, all right. Now if we move Kamara to small forward, Probably gonna go up and overall he does but we'll see what the progression looks like so let's go to player progression if murray is up enough then maybe we just play him but we'll see so we got far up to an 87 scoot up or sorry sharp up to an 86 good up to an 83 avia 82 playing at 79 uh tamari kamara 78 chris, uh, chris murray did not move so that's going to make me move uh tamari kamara to small forward and uh, he actually didn't move at all which is interesting so we're gonna move him to small forward regardless jabari walk would be that power forward again and we'll have a really nice handy dandy rotation going into next season. So I'm excited for it. We're going to jump into year two. We made the play in last year, even though we probably had no business in doing so. But I feel like we have a clean cut rotation now. And I'm excited to potentially be a sneaky playoff team this year. I think the addition of Jabari Smith Jr. is a ton of fun. We cored up a bunch of cow space by trading away, of course, Jeremy Grant, um, which, you know, led to us being able to sign a couple of free agents. We didn't really go too crazy with it. Uh, but probably going to land us 19th overall. Proficiency is three and a half under Will Hardy. Can we be up any more? No. We'll leave it at uh, that proficiency. It'll be Scoop, Jaden Sharp, Denny Avdia, Jabari Smith Jr., DeAndre, and Donovan Klingon, Tamani Kamara, DeAnthony Mellon, Jabari Walker, and Alvarado. If we run that 10-minute rotation, which we sure will. So that is going to look good. And then one other thing I want to look at with shot tendencies. So um, Sharps needs to be higher, of course. I think he should be the leading scorer here, if possible. Scoot, I want to be a really good scorer as well. Klingons, uh, it doesn't need to be that high. We don't need Klingon to score that much. Avdia, we could push up just a tad bit. And then Jabari, I'm going to push up to like an 80. So something like that. I don't really want Aiden scoring that much either. So we're going to do something like that. And boom, just like that, that will be our rotation going into the season. Those are our shot tendencies. So we'll see how this season goes. I really like what we've done with this team so far. And uh, let's just see if we make the playoffs this year. Even if we don't, we're still very young. So it's no big deal at the end of the day, even if we miss this year. So at the end of year two, after the roster, we did build things went fairly well, which is kind of exciting as a young up and coming team. Of course, we're not going to have any, uh, we're not going to have any all NBA representatives or anything like that. Would be cool if we did, but we end up as the fourth team in the Western Conference. If you take a look at the player stats, yeah, 22 from Shane Sharp, 18 from Jabari, 16 from Scoot, uh, 14 from Aiden and 12 from Klingon, 11 and a half from Denny Avdia. Seven from Melton, six from Jabari Walker, and then six from Tamani Kamara. So I'm excited to see how we do in these playoffs. Proficiency is still only three and a half, but we can go down to an nine rotation for these playoffs and see if we can go on a deep playoff run or not. So San Antonio round one, of course, they're going to have Trey Jones, Stefan Castle, Women Yama. Uh, of course, USA was able to beat France to win gold over the weekend, which was fun. Uh, but something came around against the Spurs. Can we beat Women Yama as well? No, we cannot. We lose in six. We're not ready for that task just yet. But we're still progressing. We're still getting better. So I'm not too worried. And the Spurs also went on to beat the Mavericks who won the championship last year. So at the end of the day, it's the Spurs. I'm not too upset with that. And now we can go straight in the water. So the big decision we got to make this offseason is what we're going to do with DeAndre. Because he is a free agent. I could have extended him at the deadline. But the man wanted $30 million. And I'm sorry, DeAndre, you are not worth $30 million. I'm not giving you $30 million. I don't care what it takes, but I'm not doing it. So... 
Do we move on from him and go for somebody else? Or do we, you know, try to, I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. But we have to pay uh, Jabari this offseason and Shaden Sharp. So that's going to make things a little bit tougher. But we'll make it happen. So let's go to player options and let's see what it's looking like. So Scoop, playing in Murray, I'll accept. Qualifying offers, Jabari and Shaden Sharp, of course, are free agents. And then DeAndre, unfortunately for me, like I said, $35 million. If someone wants to give him $35 million, I'll just bite the bullet and try to figure out how to replace him. I mean, we still have Klingon who could start technically. Uh, ideally, I would like to keep Aiden because his overall so high in 2K. But man, uh, you know, I can't pay him as much as he's asking for. I just can't. So what we're going to do is we're going to renounce Thibault. We're not bringing back Thibault. But um, yeah, so we're not bringing back Thibault. But Aiden, his, I'm not going to renounce him, but you know, his cap hold is very high. So Thibault and Duop Breathe, we're going to remove. And then I'm just going to simply, so Jabari and Shade Sharp get offers. We got to match them. So no doubt about it. We got to match it. So we're going to uh, match both those off offers. I was going to try to wait. Uh, so Aiden's starting to get some offers coming in. So we'll see what we do with him. So if we don't resign him, which we ought to, because he's our only option, really. So, oh man, the Rocks are coming in with an offer. Our Pistons coming in with an offer. So do we pay Aiden $30 million a year or do we move on? Oh man, that's tough. I mean, part of me does not want to pay him that much money. Trust me when I tell you, I do not want to pay that man that much money. But holy moly is keeping him somewhat important. Maybe, maybe we could trade for a center instead of paying eight that much money. Maybe I'll look up, look at that first because I, I just can't pay eight and $30 million. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's see who that could potentially be. I don't know. Do we have a center available that we could go get? Uh, that might be worth our while. Like is Mitch Robinson available? Is Claxton going to be available off Brooklyn? Something along the lines of that. Uh, so they're buying. So Claxton could in theory be available. I mean, if Detroit's going, oh, so Duran is in free agency. I'm assuming I was going to say, if Detroit's going after Aiton, that mean Duran's available. Imagine we could get a sign and trade. Like the Pistons want to trade or the Pistons want to sign Aiton. So how about you guys re-sign your boy Duran back and then we'll give you Aiden for Duran or something like that. That would be cool, but really going to be hard to pull that off. So I think I'm going to try to trade for someone and we'll see if we can pull that off instead. So I'm giving up a little bit of my depth to do this, but we're going to trade Melton, Alvarado, and Chris Murray. And then let's say, maybe I'll just Pelicans first because that could be valuable. Let's say we give our 2027 because we know we're going to be good next year. And we get Claxton. Instead of paying Aiden $30 million, we're paying Claxton 25. Is there much of a difference? Maybe not, but I think Claxton brings a little bit more of what we need rather than Aiden. So we're going to go ahead and go for Claxton. And now we have a... So far, this has been kind of a just made up scenario in my head. Like this is probably never going to happen. So this video has maybe been a little bit off the rails, but uh, it's not like out totally out of the realm of possibility, but it it definitely is at the same time. So I'm going to resign to Calixer or not resign. I mean, he played with us at one point, but I'm going to sign him. So Aiden's going to go to Detroit, which we're going to let him do. And then we're going to sign Dennis Smith, who also played in Portland at one time. And that is going to be what we do so we move on from Aiden we go to Claxton instead uh, who isn't going to look to score as much and is just going to be play defense and rebound which is kind of what we needed at the five because we know Jabari we know Scoot and we know Sharp are going to fill it up so that's kind of why we went that direction all right well we're going to next season we're excited and optimistic about what potentially things you know what, what we could do in year three I'm uh you know kind of hoping we can make the playoffs again maybe this time as a top three seed in the west and maybe win a playoff series so we'll see if that dream can come true but I'm excited ultimately to figure that out. So let's get into year three. Let's take a look at the rotation all together and let's see what we're working with. So rotationally, Pirates is going to let us 12th overall. Proficiency is a four-star balance now. So it's up to four stars. So Scoop, Sharp, Abdia, Jabari, Claxton, Klingon, Kamara, Jabari, Nikogs, and Walker. And that is a fine rotation. So let's go ahead. So my year number three and let's see how things go. So Luka wins MVP once again, like he always does. Now, we didn't get the top three seed that I kind of wanted to see, but we're a playoff team still, so I can't be too mad about that as we are the fourth seed in the West once again. So this time we don't face the Spurs, which is nice as Shane Sharp averaged 31. So of course, if we could get that one day as Blazers fans, I think we'd all be happy. Jabbar averaging 21 as well and 21 and a half from Scoot. So that all looks good. These three guys being our top leading scorers. Sounds good to me, but can we go out here and win a championship with this roster or go on a run here. Let's see what happens. So we do get to play the Grizzlies who drafted Ace Bailey. They brought back Tyus Jones as well. So a damn good team that they have. They got Parried off their bench. So we got a tough task ahead of us, but let's go ahead 
and see if we can find a way to beat the Grizzlies in round one as we got a competitive series. It's back and forth. Holy moly, the Jazz just upset the Thunder round one as the eighth seed. Can we please maybe go take advantage of this bracket? We got to win this one, though. So if we win this one, ah, uh, which we're not going. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, it's close. But no, we're going to lose. 34. Man, uh, that sucks. 134. Or what was the final score? I don't know why I just said 34. It was 135. Why did I say? Oh, no. Jabari scored 34. That's why I said 34. There was 135 to 132. Utah ended up beating this Thunder team. So they did add Shingoon, which is, you know, kind of fun. But all right. Well, we'll see if we can win two in a row to maybe get out of round one. We have not been able to do so just yet. But we have ourselves a nice little lead here in game uh, six to maybe go force the game seven back to Portland. It looks like we could blow the lead and we don't. So we do end up winning. So now we got a game seven on our hands. So we got really close to winning this game five. So we could potentially be in the second round, but we did lose. So we got to win this game seven. It's a close one so far, uh, but we do have a nice little lead right now. And I think as long as we don't blow this gigantic lead at the end, we are going to the second round. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see with the Thunder out of the way and the Spurs out of the way. Can we go to the finals? I mean, the Jazz are going to be interesting because they just upset the Thunder for crying out loud. They swept them. Not only upset them, they swept those guys. So let's see if we can beat the Jazz. I don't know, man. If the fact that they just beat them, we do win game one, though. Uh, they evened it up. Game three goes to them. Game four goes to them. So the Jazz are serious, man. They're legit. So it's nice we won a series, but I thought maybe with the Thunder out of the way, this could be our year. I mean, maybe it still could be, but we got to, you know, make a crazy comeback. So we are going to win game five to make things a little interesting. All we got to do is win game six and things become very interesting. But we're getting blown out early on here unless we climb back in this game, which uh, maybe we do. No, nah, we're not going to. We're down 10. It's not impossible, but uh, usually it doesn't go that way for me. So we're about to go into year four with no championship, but... Still a lot of optimism behind us, so that sucks. But Big 3 has definitely established themselves, and Scoot should per develop even more. So we got Utah. I mean, they won the championship, so we pushed them to six. What can you do? Uh, Sacramento, you know, DeRozan's retiring, and then let's get straight into lottery again. So we do have New Orleans pick this offseason, which it is going to be lottery pick, which is nice. So it's a pick swap, though, I think, because as you can see, Pelicans have been more, or maybe it's not. I don't know. But all right. Number nine, let's see what it ends up being. If it jumps up to one, that'd be cool, but it's not going to. So it's going to stay at nine. So we get to draft whoever at number nine, which is going to be fun. Uh, I don't know if they'll contribute that much in this video since we'll have two more, two more years left, but uh, let's just go ahead and draft them still anyway. So let's go see when we get a pick nine. So number nine, uh, Caleb Holt. I mean, we kind of could use a guard of the future as a development backup, and we got a Hall of Fame guard. I think we take them no hesitation. So... I have a late pick in this draft as well. So let's take a look at that. So we got 24. Uh, we got this guy, starter, 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 uh, and starter. All right. I don't even think it matters who we draft. So I'm just going with the assistant GM to take care of that. So just like that, we walk away with uh, 77 Caleb Holt of the draft. Not bad. And we get Francis Hart. Welcome to the team. Playing in, welcome back. Qualifying offer scoots a free agent. So we got to pay this man as well. Team is getting expensive, but we knew what we were signing up for. So let's just go ahead and sign him. So everyone else can go. We got our new guard, which I mean, getting him in the draft could be really handy. I mean, we got him from uh, what trade was it again? We'll figure it out. But Caleb Holt might play back a point guard for us. He's got B minus playmaking. So we'll figure that out. Uh, but I think I'm going to keep the rotation pretty much the same. I think that's what we're going to do. So let's go to player progression and let's see what we're about to go do in year four. So we're going to year four. Won a series last year, pushed the Jazz to six, and now we got to see if we can maybe make that ultimate step. So, Scoot is up to an 87, so kind of figured he'd develop even more. Denny Avdia is up, Klingon is up, and, uh, you know, Caleb Poe, I think, Jordan's rotation could be legendary as well. So, year number four, same rotation other than adding a Hall of Fame future guard, apparently. Let's see what year four has in store for us. So yet another MVP war for Luka Doncic, but Shaden Sharp wins clutch play of the year. He's doing his thing. I mean, boosting his shot tendency obviously helped, but the efficiency that he's coming with is also awesome. Would have loved to have seen him on an all-NBA team, but unfortunately he just doesn't get there, which is a little disappointing. All defensive first team and all defensive second team, so no awards for us at all. We do get Caleb Holt making all rookie second team, averaging nine points, and very efficient off the bench. I mean, he had a 50-40. I mean, he didn't play very many minutes, but damn, he was damn good. So we end up as the first team in the West. So I think adding Caleb Holt and then what Sharp was able to do, uh, this team is starting to catch stride a little bit. So 
We're going into year number four, year four of the playoffs. This is what our rotation is currently looking like. I mean, I have to imagine we have a good chance. We get the uh, the Warriors who have Keontae George who left Utah. So Utah and Kessler, wow. Both of them left Utah. So that makes Utah a little bit weaker as they aren't even in the freaking playoffs. So they'll still make our round against Golden State. And we are going to sweep them. So no sweat there. Now we get the Grizzlies who we beat last year. It was a competitive series. Uh, so let's see if it could be like that again, or can we just beat them in four or something? So somebody current round and they do win game one, but we win the next two. We're up three to one. Can we beat them in five? Yes, we can. And now we draw the thunder. So we were able to avoid them last year because Utah upset them. But this time around, we do uh, get them. Wow. I've never seen them get RJ Barrett. So RJ Barrett in Oklahoma City is definitely new to me. Uh, Cameron Boozer is on the thunder. So this is going to be a tough matchup, but here goes nothing. So game one. Goes to them. Game two. Goes to them. Game three. We maybe win. Can we win game four? No. Three to one. So we're down three to one to the Thunder. Like usual, this is familiar territory for me. But let's see if we can maybe come back and make things you know, happen. I don't know. So this is going to be a close game five. We have to win it if we want to stay alive. We do start to run away with it a little bit. And it looks like we might. Yes, yeah, so we do beat them by 10. Scoot with 44. Sharp with 40. What a... What a game. All right, so now it's game six in OKC. If we can win this one, we're going back to Portland. We have lead right now, so maybe we can... Uh, we're starting to blow it, though. Maybe. Uh, it's going to be close. Nope, we're going to beat them. Wow, okay. So we forced a game seven. 42 from Scoot, 28 from Shaden Sharp. And now we go to game seven in Portland to see if we can finish the comeback. So it's going to be a close one, although it looks like we're starting to run away with it a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Uh, they, it looks, they keep going on runs, but we keep like weathering the storm. They're down eight, down seven, down seven again. But nope, we are going to complete the three to one comeback. As sharp as your conference finals MVP, averaging 38 points per game. And now we draw the Brooklyn Nets, who have Josh Giddy, Stephen Curry, and Cooper Flag. Very weird big three, but I respect it. All right. So they also have Bradley Beal. Very bizarre team, but I don't know if you guys have, you know, watched my videos, but it feels like every time I play Brooklyn, no matter what, no matter what their team looks like, I always lose to them. So kind of expecting a loss here. So game one goes to them. Game two, we even it up. Game three, we win. Game four, we got a huge game five. So game five in Brooklyn to see if we can win this one. To give ourselves the competitive or the advantage in this series. It's going to be a close one, it looks like. Maybe. Do we win? And it is going to go to us. Okay. Do we win in game six or do we, four, or do we go to a game seven? Game six goes to us. And just like that, in year number four, we get a championship. We had to come back from three to one. Stephen Curry is gone. So Brooklyn, the team that was kind of a nightmare for us, I guess, to match up with in the finals, we beat them. And now we can just simply run this bad boy back. So that is what we'll do. Coach staff is completely filled out. We're going to run it back for trying, you know, to try to win a, uh, another championship to go back to back. Do we have, we have the sixth overall pick via Milwaukee from the Damian Lillard trade. So, uh, let's see what that maybe could be. So number six, I mean, no matter what we add here, they're probably not going to be like very important in the rotation. So we're going into the last season. I'm curious to see how much Caleb Holt develops or develops into though. So uh, we'll resign all these guys, even though I don't think they'll crack the rotation, but I could be wrong. So Ryan Repair and Klingon are both free agents. Uh, Ryan Repair hasn't really cracked the rotation, but Klingon. Uh, oh, wow. Then you have Diaz a free agent as well. So we're going to resign everybody just because simply we're about to run it back anyway for a final season. So let's just bring everyone back. So. Let's just do that. So, Denny Avdia, Klingon, Claxton, sign a lot of money. So, a lot of money is being paid. Jody Allen would never. And we can re-sign. I mean, was Jabari Walker playing? I can't remember. Um, and we just drafted a couple of guys that could probably replace him technically. Uh, do we want to bring him back? Yeah, we might as well. So, let's bring him back. I mean, it's final season. Who cares? So, Ryan Repair will be back as qualifying offer. We are losing to Cal Alexander Walker, but it's all good. All right. We're going to year five. Let's see how much uh, Caleb Holt develops into it because he's got like Hall of Fame progression, maybe. So let's see what that's looking like. So repairs back. So Holt's already in 82. He's up to a he's up to a 82 overall. So that's fantastic. All right, guys. Let's get into year number five. So this time Caleb Holt wins most improved player. This man came in and averaged 21 points per game this year, which is really fun. Will Hardy is your coach of the year. So we got a freaking gem in the draft. Uh, so no all NBA representatives, unfortunately, but, uh, as you can see, let's take a look at the player stats. So Caleb Holt comes in and averages 20 off the bench. I can't imagine why he didn't go ahead and get like a six man nod. I don't see why not, 
But whatever, all good. He is a six man here. And I assume with him under our belts, we're about to go on a huge run here. So let's see if we can go back to back to end the video. And we almost blew a lead to the Spurs. Wow. Trey Young, Hugo, Keldon, uh, Women, Yamas, Von Castle. Now we get the Mavericks. We have Luka Doncic. We're not being too surprised here if Luka eliminated us here. So let's see. And nope, we're going to beat them in five. And now we draw the Thunder, who we did beat last year. They no, allow, no longer have RJ Barrett. So maybe it's addition by subtraction. And they're up 3 to 1 on us. And we lose in five. So we can't go back to back, unfortunately. But hey, you know what? We got one in this video, and that's all that matters. So the Thunder go on and win it all. I hope you guys enjoy the video regardless. I'm going to end it on that note. I will see y'all in the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.